Hello everyone and welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, in this particular episode of Measure with Mensa, we'll be looking at some sample questions of the Mensa examination and find out how to solve them and the way to go about them. Let's look at our first question for the day. Find the pair to complete the following sequence using the given options. These are the options, the smaller figure, and the larger figure is, uh, it shows us the actual sequence. So in the sequence, we have five figures. We need to find out what figure number six would look like. Um, if you look at the five figures, you see that each figure has two shapes. Um, you have a circle and a triangle. Then you have the same circle and a different circle with, a, with an X in it. Then you have a circle and um, a square with an X in it. Then you have the triangle from before and the circle with an X. Then you have the triangle and the square with an X. So this is how the sequence goes. Now if you look at the sequence, um, you see that every, um, uh, every figure that we have, so we have four figures in total and every figure has to pair up with one of the other figures. This is from the fact that the circle has already paired up with every other figure, one, two, three, and four. Now two already figured up, paired up with one, now it has to pair up with three and four, creating figures four and five. The only pair that hasn't been seen on the sequence is three and four. So therefore we need to find out the figure containing um, the circle with a cross and the square with a cross, and that would constitute our uh, pair to complete the following sequence. Option A has the triangle, which is incorrect. Option C has the triangle and the clear circle, which is incorrect. Um, option D has a triangle that's incorrect. Option E has the same figure on both sides, which is also incorrect. The right answer is option B. In option B, you have figures 3 and 4 as a pair, and that pair will complete the following sequence. So option B turns out to be the right option. Next question. Um, this is a maze given here. We need to travel out of this number maze by finding a meaningful root. Now this meaningful root can be any given number series, which we can use to get from the center to the top right square. So uh, um, we can move horizontally, we can move vertically or we can move diagonally. However, we can only visit every square once. Um, so we can use multiple number series. We can use whole numbers, natural numbers. Um, we can use odd numbers, even numbers, and so on. But um, we need to find out a way to get from the center to the outside. Now, if we look at uh, the the numbers surrounding the center, we can see that the number series that will give us a semblance of getting out would be that of prime numbers. Now prime numbers are numbers which only have two factors, one and the number itself. Um, so using the series of prime numbers, we can actually get out from the center towards the ex exterior. So um, the first prime number would be two, that's right here. Then we have three, so we have two ways to go about it. We can either continue going left or we can go like this. Now the advantage of going diagonally upwards is that um, we can move on to the next prime number, which would be five. Um, after that, the next prime number would be seven, which means you can move down diagonally. Um, after that, the next prime number is 11, so we can move up and we can consider these two tiles to represent 11. The next prime number is 13, moving down. We can take all of that together. The next prime number is 17, again, same idea, taking two of the tiles together is one and forming the prime number. Um, after that, we have 19 as the next prime number. So these two tiles are together we move diagonally upwards. The next um, prime number would be 23. 
Um, so from 9 we move to 2 and then we take these two diagonally as our um, prime number. Um, 25, 27 are not prime, but 29 is still a prime number, so we move um, right, and then we take these two diagonally as the, that prime number. Um, after 29, the next prime number would be 31. Um, so basically, we'll move right again. These two become the prime number. Um, 33, 35 are not prime. 37 is a prime number. So we move vertically upwards. Um, that will give you 37. Um, after that, the next prime number is 41, which means you can move upwards diagonally instead of straight upwards. And that would give you this particular um, couplet as the number 41. And finally, the prime number that we can then use to get out. The only digits that's left on the maze are 43. So we come down back to the next four, then move up to three. The two couple the two couple together to give us 43, and we finally reach the top right square to get out. So therefore, that this, the correct sequence that we use to get out of this maze is the sequence of prime numbers. And by finding out the correct way to implement the sequence, we can get out from the middle square to the top right square. Now. Let's look at the next question. This one has um, three parts in it um, because of the fact that we have three sequences that need to be solved. The first, in each of the sequences, we need to find the number which logically comes next in sequence. Um, in A, we have 266, 196, 256, and 169. Now, we need to find the logic behind it. Now, these aren't odd, even, or squares. Um, However, um, what we can do is let's use the, um, the sum of the digits of the first number. That's 2 plus 6 plus 6. six, six, is, six plus 6 is 12, plus 2 gives you 14. Now, the funny thing about it is that 196 is actually 14 squared. So the idea is... Um, square of sum of digits of the previous number gives us the next number. So that's the logic that we use. So now we know that 196 is correct. Um, um, so when we take 1 plus 9 plus 6, that gives you um, 1 plus 9 is 10, plus 6 is 16. 16 squared is 256. So as you can see, it's still the sequence still follows. Um, 2 plus 5 plus 6, that's 6 plus 7, gives you 13. Um, 13 squared is indeed 169, so the sequence is still correct. So as we know our logic is sound, we can now use that logic in order to find the uh, missing number. The missing number is 1 plus 6 plus 9, the whole squared. Um, 9 plus 7 gives you 16, so 16 squared is once again 256. So the right answer that will replace the question mark is 256. So for the first sequence, it is 256. If we look at the next sequence, again, we have a sequence of seemingly unrelated numbers. Um, 126, 72, 648, 5112, 9216, 1472, and then we have the question mark. Um, so again, as in the last figure where we uh, tried to break things down, let's do the same idea. 1 plus 2 plus 6 doesn't give you 72. 6, 2 are 12 into 1 still, again, doesn't give you 72. Um, however, if we look at 72... Uh, if we look at its factors, it can be written as 12 times 6, which is basically um, the components of the first number. So from the first to the second, we can write it as 12 times 6. So 12, 12 times 6 gives us 30, 72. Now, how do we get 648? Um, so 648... 
if we divide that by 72, um, should give us 9. So 720 minus 72, so 10 minus 2 is 8, 11 minus 7 is 4, and this is 6, so 648. Um, so it'll be 72 times 9. Now, if you were to add the digits of the first number, that would be 1 plus 2 plus 6. That would give you 9. So as you can see, um, the first number is directly linked to the second number, which is then um, indirectly also linked with the third number. So um, it'll be sets of 3. Um, so uh, now we have gotten the same idea until 648. Now what are we going to do? We're going to use the same idea in order to continue to 5112. 64 times 8. If we, are, if we were to do that step, then we would know that the, the answer is 5112. Um, 4 8s are 52, 6 8s are 48, plus 5 is 50. 4 8s are 32, um, 6 8s are 51, I mean 6 8s are 48, plus 3 is 51, so again 5 1 12, that stands correct. Um, using that, we're going to be uh, multiplying 5 1 12 with 6 plus 4 plus 8. So that would give us 9 to 1, 6. Basically, we're 6 plus 4 is 10, 10 plus 8 is 18. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply 5, 1, 12 by 18. So um, that would give you um, 5, 1, 2, 0. You add that up, you get 9 to 1, 6. So as we can see, our logic is still sound. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then uh, how do we get 1, 4, 7, 2? Let's look at that step. So it'll be 92 times 16. Um, 2 sixes are 12. Um, and 6 is uh, 54. Plus 1 is 55. Um, Two nine one so it'll be nine twenty plus five fifty two gives you two seven um, nine plus five is fourteen so that's one four seven two so as you can see the logic still stands. So how do we get the value which is equivalent to the question mark? So what we're going to do is we're going to add the digits of um, 9 to 1, 6. So that'll be 9 plus 2 plus 1 plus 6 times 1, 4, 7, 2. So 9 plus 2 is 11. 11 plus 1 is 12. 12 plus 6 is 18. So what we're going to do is we're going to do 1, 4, 7, 2 times 18. So 2, 8 is 16. 7 eighths are 56, plus 1 is 57, 4 eighths are 32, 37, 8 plus 3, 11, and then 2, 7, 4, 1. So we have 6, 9, 4, um, 2 and 4 gives you 6 and then 2. So the final answer would be 26,496. So the number that would replace the question mark in the sequence, the, the number that should come logically as the next number in the sequence would be 26,496. Now let's look at the final question uh, of the day. Um, again in this particular sequence, we need to consider the number 864 and complete the following sequence. Now, if we look at 864, if we uh, you know, add the digits together, it'll be 8 plus 6 plus 4. Um, 6 plus 4 is 10, 
plus 8 is 18. So since it's um, 18, the sum is 18, and it's divisible by 3 and 9, um, we can consider 864 or any um, number that contains 8, 6, and 4 to be divisible by 9. So now by adding, the, adding it up, we find out, found out that um, any number, any three-digit number containing these three digits in any formation would give us a number that's divisible by 9. So we've got, uh, if you were to arrange them in ascending order, we'd have 468 first, then you have 486, after that you'd have 648, then you'd have 684, then you would have 846, and finally the number that they gave us, 864. So all you have to do is divide each of these by 9 and see what that leads us. So 468 divided by 9 um, divided by 9. So 9 fives are 45, um, 9 twos are 18. So therefore we get 52. Now 52 is also the first number in our given sequence. So, so far that lo logic holds. Let's try that again. Um, for 486, um, it would be again 9, so 5, 45 gives you 3, 6 goes down, it'll be 54. So therefore, the next uh, number that we get by, divi by dividing 486 with 9 is 54. Um, after, so as we can see, the logic still holds, which means we can consider 648 divided by 9 to be 72, 684 divided by 9 to be 76, 846 divided by 9 to be 94, since the logic holds, you have to divide that, try dividing them, and you would still get the right answers, the same answers, which means that the, the number that we need in order to complete the sequence is 864 divided by 9. Now when we do that, 9 nines are 81, gives you 5, 4 comes down, um, 9 sixes are 54. So therefore, 864 divided by 9 gives us 96, which means the number that we require to complete the following sequence based on the divisibility test of 9 is 96. So 96 is the correct answer. Now that concludes this episode of Measure with Mensa. We hope you found this interesting. For more of our useful and interesting contact con content, don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate, your partner in education. So until the next webisode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.